And something like this location is what I want for this painting because one of the most terrifying experiences you can have is being in an environment where a fire is sweeping up the hillside, fed by this strong hot wind. But most of all, there's no way in the world you can capture the true feeling of a firestorm if you map it out with a pencil and then colour it in, either blocking it in or using a small brush or whatever. That will have a kind of a distant feeling about it, as though you are painting something or rendering an experience that happened in the past, like a photograph. You won't get the spirit. The only way to capture the spirit is to feel it. And the techniques then have to be able to harness the feeling that I'll put into it. So what I'll be doing is I'll be getting paint with the right technique and with feeling the spirit of this wind and of the raging fire making the strokes sweep up, up the hillside, terrorising, gaining strength as it rises up through here. And as an artist, that's the only chance we have to really capture the spirit and the feeling, the immediacy of being able to put a viewer right in the spot. I'm going to make this place unrecognisable, an absolute torment of flame. Hit my wind, this wind feeding it as it roars up the hill. This painting is about 60 centimetres by 40 centimetres. Blank canvas ready to go. The last thing I want to do with the painting ever, and especially with this painting, where fire and smoke are so fluid and so protean, full of movement and richness and vitality, the last thing is to actually design it. So I've got no idea really of the layout of this painting. Couldn't care less and I don't want to. I've only got the basic, very, very early, tiny little bit of skeleton of an idea. So with fire, I can use colour, which is stronger on day one. In the spirit of bushfire, raging fire. How free is this? Can you feel the spirit already of a raging fire? The movement of it, the lack of stable form. The question is, do I want a wind direction? So if the wind is blowing this way, the movement and the strokes will capture the spirit of the wind as well as the fire, or if you like, the spirit of the fire in the grip of the wind. A lot of white in these early stages to be able to develop the depth, which I'll increase in a second. I'm just getting the feeling of it straight away first. Maybe some distance over here. Maybe there's some darkness in the air as well. We'll get to that in a second. So the energy is there now. The vitality is there. These are little bits of blank canvas still fighting back with their boredom and crying out for it, which means that at this point, I can just be a little bit more careful about how I adjust the energy that's there. So I've applied the energy. Now I'm adjusting the energy and adjusting as the painting requires. In other words, as my creativity requires. So I'm varying the texture now, smooth and sharp with the knife and striated and variegated with the brush, unmixed paint at all times and predominantly light in tone. Now, you know what the boring guys would do? They would have designed this and have everything in its right place and then coloured it in. Why do that, guys? Might as well stick your brain into a blender. This is vital. Visual power. Woohoo, dry. 
perfect. That means it's screaming out for creativity. So let's do it. Remember how much red we put on last time? Now I get to shape the size and style of fire. This is an angry, aggressive fire with wind moving this way. There'll be flames in the trees. Embers down here. Okay, so here we are. That was a blast, complete blast, bang into it. I'm just really cleaning up now. If I overdo this, I'll take away the immediacy. And that'll do, that's it. Master touch. You can see it is completely abstract with the feeling building. Each of those strokes had the feeling invested in it and through the layers that is going to develop and intensify. Fair income, too much fun. Catch in a few weeks, which will be right now. Dry, ready. At this point, nothing is defined. It doesn't look like it's a fire. The spirit and the essence is in it, but the form is not there. Creative energy, but no form, no physical form that tells us this is fire. Because physical form is not what I'm after in the early stages of a painting. The spirit of the physical form is what I'm after. Now, if you look at this, you can see that the spirit of the form of the flames inherent in this is moving in this direction. Which means the wind is coming from here, blowing the flames this way. A big fire gets bigger by oxygen coming in with the wind, which means movement must be in this painting as well. We have to capture movement if we're to give the authenticity to capture the spirit of a very big bushfire. So let's hook in and attack it. What I want is blasts of flame. I can always subdue it later. Get it in now and then I've got it happening and I can control this bushfire with the result that the bushfire looks random and mad. Now where this goes is going to be determined by art. So even though it looks random, experience is telling me where to put this at the moment, how strong or weak to make it at the moment and what I'm going to do with it later. You may see in this early stage the wind affect the movement in what I'm doing. The very strokes that I'm doing are in the spirit of the wind. Wind being an element of the subject, not visible but visible in effect. here. You'll see why later.
So just in a few seconds we've altered the location of the weight of where the eye rests which used to be in those red striking areas before and they're now spread through the painting a bit more I don't know what's going to happen here yet I think that might be distance or smoke or both so now I've got the energy on the canvas, the fundamental essence of this thing, which I then manipulate. And I also add more energy in the form of various techniques. So here now I'm using the brush using a dark transparent glaze and working it into the valleys of the texture. This could be ash or smoke or shadows, anything that the fire throws up that comes from this atmosphere of flame and I'm working it into the valleys so that it increases the effects of visual depth while it gets into the physical surface of the paint. So I'm affecting the physical surface of the paint so that it will present the image that I want ultimately. Another way of manipulating what I've just put on now is to use the knife. It creates a different effect again, scrapes off the surface of the texture and drives the paint into the shadows and I have control over it and I'm shaping it as I go. These are little flecks of base colour, mixed white, and it will take a beautiful glaze as a hit and glow. And I'll be doing this a lot. Now I'm adding more energy. This is not painting flame or anything. This is foundation. I'll apply other techniques over the top of these to create a complex effect. Very different from spending hours on the palette and then on the painting just colouring it in. Very different. See how I'm capturing the spirit of the wind driving the flames and everything this way as we wanted to? Up the hill so dangerous. Then coming over again with more energy, more vitality, more complexity. It looks like I've painted over everything that I've done, but no, even the light applications are see-through. I'm varying the degree to which they are transparent and opaque. These are see-through. The underwork does show through and adds to the complexity and adds to the end result effect. So the dark is still there, but it's adding to the complexity. So when I put dark on top of it again, I get several instances of dark receding into the paint surface, all of them contributing visually. After all these stages, the overall tonality of the painting is very light, still. Which means today when I put in the darknesses, the smoke and the shadows and things like that, these will hold a whole lot of interest, a whole lot of detail and visual vitality, complexity, rather than just a blocked in, dead colour. Now usually what happens is people block in the darks first. In fact, that's one of the bloody stupid things that people teach. Put your darks in first and then go to light. Or put your mid-tones in. Whereas with advanced painting, the longer that you hold off making your painting dark, the more effects your shadows are going to have. And in this case, the darknesses of smoke. So it's the very opposite of what is normally taught. Because overall the painting is light in tone, still, what I put on has a luminosity about it. Ooh. See that richness? Look at that. Colours all through it. Detail. Bits of bush. And so we're dramatising the painting now with light and dark. Still not worried about colour. So now I'm adding the red to indicate flame. Not painting flames individually. Creating 
not colouring in. Now to reclaim some of these areas. As I work, I'm getting a feeling for where I want a mass focus of flame to be. And at this point, I'm not sure where it is, but it will come. So I keep combining techniques, developing visual vitality, always in the spirit. This is part of the creative knife technique that I teach. What this does is holds the creative blast pretty much in place. The creative knife technique isn't always accurate, other than it works with the texture. And if the texture is accurate, then the application will be. And by dabbing it, the effects remain largely in place. So the impact of this visually is a whole lot of areas that are a light. which is a foundation then for where I want to actually locate the eye more specifically. So the overall thing is a flame and then I'll guide the eye. Once this is done, it doesn't have enough of the sweep. All of those are things to happen. The spirit of it is going in that direction and that's what matters for now. I can't overdo these strokes. They've got to go in and pretty much stay today. Otherwise, I'll just blur it into a blended mess. Now I'm looking forward to doing a big sort of blast of flame somewhere. So I'm starting to get a sort of a blaze happening here. The actual licks and flicks of flame can happen last. They're in it, but they don't catch the eye. They affect the eye, they capture the spirit of it, but they don't impact the eye first off, which I'm going to do. And this is settling in very nicely, I like that. So what I do now is I lay it flat and I just forget about it until it's rock hard. See you then. Fabulous. All of this white is foundation. That's what I'm going to hit today. I'm going to focus on a gold as though the blast of yellow dirty gold hits this area here and comes up through the painting, darkens some areas and check it out again after that. The gold I'm talking about is very subtle, but it's also very effective because it's a strong gold and it's transparent. It harmonizes that area with that color, so it creates a block of effect without an impactful definition of the block. And then of course in come the darks again, different types of darks by the way, transparent glaze again. It's the darkness that is scary in a bushfire as well as the raging flame. Everything can go black. You can see I'm creating fallen branches and twigs just with two quick applications. See the drama intensifying already. point where I can add where trees can be. These can be wiped off. I can clear all of this out and start again replacing where the trees might be, just playing. Can you see the difference? Trees would have been the very first thing someone drew in with a pencil and then coloured in on blank canvas. Totally stiff and stuck. 
Whereas I can play, I'm a master of creativity. You can be too, but it takes knowledge of techniques and knowledge of the creative process. This is what art is all about. Whereas a lot of painting, just colouring in, is predominantly in the bucket of craft. Looks good to the untrained eye, but it's craft work. It's craft process. And now that's very wet. There's a lot of medium in it. So this will diffuse a bit. These are actual guided strokes now. So what I'm doing here is using the wetness of the paint to affect the paint after I've put it on. You can see how I'm capitalizing on all of that previous creative work. Flame is starting to look like flame. The flame is certainly sweeping up the hill. The spirit that I was working with and honoring is now presenting itself in physical form. You can see the wind affecting the flame as the wind blows up the hill and as the flame sucks oxygen from the wind into itself. It's a feeding frenzy growing. So what your eye is seeing here are instances of flame and heat and trees and things burning that have all arrived. I didn't put them there by design, by physical design from the start. I didn't draw them in. I didn't draw any of these trees or flames or little burning things. Didn't draw any of that. Didn't block them in. Didn't colour them in. Didn't develop them from the start. They have grown out of the artistic experience, out of the artistic process, and out of the paint surface itself which means the whole thing has this authenticity about it, that it's its own world. It's not, in essence, a human depiction. It is its own world, its own organic universe, a complete sovereign being in its own right. Remember all that red we had before? It's all forming the base issue just as I wanted. All this up in the trees is good, isn't it? I'll get some red up into there as well. There are all the flames tearing off the trees, off the branches. OK, I'm going to lay that flat so it goes hard, rock hard, in that shape. Deal with it then. This is the stage that I start shaping the flames. And this is a crimson. So it allows me to shape it. And I can wipe it all off if I want. The flame is actually, this flame is the feature of the painting. These are wonderful little touches, all of the bits of stuff that's a light. All created right from day one with the texture. Enabling this to happen really, really well. I 
I'm happy. I've shaped my fire. I've got the effect. I can intensify it, I think, a bit by coming up around here and here. Pure white. There we are. Now I'm going to leave that because there's a lot more that needs to be done. It just gives me a centre and a contrasting colour. I've shaped the fire. You can see it is now fire. What a stage. This is the only way to create paintings. Into it again, transparent glazing, opaque glazing, creative knife technique, scumbling, wiping off, and so it goes. I used 11 of the 12 techniques in this painting to finish it, which I'll show you in a second, it's done. What I will do though is show you some close-ups as I speak so you can see the incredible detail the visual vitality that these advanced techniques give you. But as you can see now, what matters to me in art is spirit. If you capture the spirit, then you've caught the substance that you can communicate. And it's a beautiful kind of um, revelatory experience for me to see spirit arrive first in its nascent form with no power, just beginning to present itself. And as you develop it, it gains this power because you're packing creative energy into it. And at that point, it's abstract. In other words, there's no real physical reference point to the image itself. And as you refine it, you can maintain that abstract quality if you want, or you can take it into a direction which resolves the energy, the spiritual energy, into something that is more physically recognisable, a reference point for the eye that people can relate to more easily. So you've got all these different choices that you can do, and the painting doesn't have to be one or the other. I can have a, areas that are abstract and areas that aren't. Which incidentally brings me to this very final stroke, which I'll show you now. Now this scene is full of trees that are burnt. And the very first thing an incompetent or just the traditional painter or, or the, the really bad teaching that you're getting on YouTube continually, floods of it, millions of them, millions of views. What they would do is they would map out the trees first and colour them in. But that isn't the subject. The subject is fire. And so I've left this stroke till the end and I'm only doing it in a very subtle see-through fashion so that the eye looks through the tree and sees the fire, which is the main subject. The tree is not blocking the eye from the main subject, from getting the full impact of what a fire would be, which is frightening. Yet the eye makes it into a tree even though it's see-through. So it serves this brilliant function, this stroke of triggering the effect of a tree without interfering with the impact of what the subject of this painting is all about. 
And there you go, that's the finished painting. Many months of work, crazy for a little one. This is like a postage stamp for me. And if you've stayed with me this far, there must be something that's attracted you to the process itself. Something more than what you get elsewhere, which is the crap. The facile craft pretending to be art crap. Which means I'll give you a little bonus. And it won't be to do with painting. Let me show you this. I'm standing on a beach which you may well have already seen but not under these conditions. This beach made worldwide news because a whole community, one of several on the east coast of Australia, had to rush to the water and swim in the water to escape the fires of that horrific New Year's Eve in 2019. All of this hillside here and the surrounding headlands burnt with this powerful nor'wester that came from this direction. So it blew all of these burning shrubs and sticks onto the beach. It was dangerous, it was a hellscape and they were waiting for a southerly to come through which is the wind that's happening now, the southerly from the south. And what it did when it came through was pick up these burning bushes and throw them into those houses there on the hillside and people stood and watched that headland burn within a minute, gone. These are all new homes there now. What a phenomenal experience it was. I know this beach very well. This was my childhood playground. And where I just filmed is no more than a kilometre into the bush, just there. And that's where I also fought the fire or the remnants of it. And I'll show you some scenes of this area that was taken by me the very next day that people came here to stay alive. Fred is just fucking insane.